See, a lot of women underestimate the power of being teased, of teasing men. You see, in the relationship, you get, it gets stale not because you guys fall out of, love, out of love, but because there's no spark. And teasing and proactively teasing will keep relationships alive. So before I show you guys the four different ways to tease, I gotta tell you guys the elements of the tease, what makes it work and why it works. The number one reason why it works is the subtleness. It has to be subtle, you see. So in reality, it's the subtleness that matters because when it's, when it's way too direct, there's no mystery, you see. And so this is how I'm gonna show you how to do it, all right. And it also another element is the withdrawal. The withdrawal causes them to use their imagination. Their imagination comes comes in the form of, comes because of the sensory deprivation. Because for example, like when you're in a sensory deprivated state, like when you're in a place where you have no senses your brain will create the senses. It'll fill in the gaps. So when you see a woman that you desire, suddenly she disappears. Your brain will begin creating what's left. Well, your brain will, um, will begin recreating, the, um, filling up the gaps, filling up the holes, you see? And so that part, the withdrawal part, on top of the tease and subtleness, is what makes guys go think of you, imagine. But you only need to do that by creating space, okay? You see? So another element of the tease, I'm, um, the, I'm gonna show you two more, is leaving on a high note. Leaving at the point where he wants to consume everything and stopping and saying, oh, sorry, I got to go right now. And just running away and looking at him, looking at him almost as though I know I got you. And it has to be a game. And yeah, he's going to be frustrated, but happy at the same time. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Now, the last thing is the anticipation. You see, and I quote, the power of food comes not only from its taste, but from the anticipation. The anticipation is based on prior experience, learning and memory. Something, something's going to set off that anticipation. Thoughts are, those are thoughts of wanting. You see, that's why you gotta give that space. And the only way for you to want something is to experience something at a low level. Now, and I continue quoting, this is from my book, I forgot what book it was. People who have a hard time controlling their eating, their brain circuits um, remain elevated and activate it until all the food is gone. The next time you get cued, you do it again. It's similar to like the temptation and the teasing. Every time you engage in this cycle, you strengthen the neural circuits. The anticipation gets strengthened. It's in part because of ambivalence. Do you ever have an internal dialogue? Boy, that would taste real great. No, I shouldn't have it. I really want that, but I shouldn't. That sort of ambivalence increases the reward value of the food. It increases the anxiety, it increases the arousal. It keeps it, it keeps it in working memory. We're wired to focus um, on the most salient stimuli, stimuli in our environment. For some people, it could be alcohol or illegal drugs or nicotine or sex. For many of us, it's food. And in your occasion, it's you. Let's get started. So the number one way, we're going to be going through physical teasing, mental teasing, emotional teasing, and situational teasing, all right? The first one is physical teasing. When you walk to, to, when you talk to him, touch him near his thighs from time to time. You see, if you guys haven't done anything, like just when you randomly talk like, oh, you're so funny, and touch him in his thighs from time to time. You see, and just a light touch. You see, he'll notice, he'll notice. You see, another way is hug him and then push him away physically. For example, when you see him, oh baby, I'm, oh, I'm so happy to see you. Oh, get away from me anyways, and change the topic. You see, like he's feeling your touch, feeling whatever, feeling your warmth, and he likes that, and then you push him away. Okay, that's teasing, all right? And this could happen in any phase of the relationship. And it's something that's subtle and like suddenly, like it doesn't matter, like it's just, a, it's just playful, all right? Another one is, I like, I like this one, I like this one. Playing a game where you don't touch each other for a whole day, but wear provocative clothes to make him want to stop playing the game. You see, like saying whoever wins does this, or turning him on and then play for him, or, or, or play for him, or playfully stop midway and do something else. For example, just play a game of okay, we don't touch each other for two days. Whoever gives in has to do this, okay? And then the competition begins. You see, when you do that, it's fun. You see, you're teasing each other, you're walking around like, you want to touch me now, babe? And then running away, right? Um, it's really fun. Like, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It's, it's like if you smoke weed and stop smoking weed for a day, your tolerance goes up, right? Um, another one is, like I said, turning him, turning him on and then playfully pushing him away. Like, the few, let's say that he, he's, he's not having as much sex with you as he used to. Then just playfully start turning him on and pushing him away. You see? If he senses that, you, that you're teasing him, he's going to like that. Um... And as long as you have an air of playfulness and not in the way to control them, you're good. Um, number two, how to mentally um, tease them. 
when the brain is used to a stimulus, the brain will create its own stimulus to, to satisfy itself, i.e. phantom limbs and sensory deprivation. So by intentionally giving him some um, intentionally giving him some space after physically teasing him, as long as the relationship doesn't have a history of cheating and whatnot, it's good to use that to give him time to think of you, to fantasize about you. You see, attraction strengthens over time and space, not when you guys are together in the moment. You see, that's when you plant it. It doesn't strengthen in that moment. Okay, so that's why the brain will exaggerate reality, will exaggerate who you, how you look, will exaggerate the pleasures that you're gonna give him. All right, like, like when he thinks of you and you tease them, right, and he's hard, and he's hard He's gonna think that you give like the most mind-blowing, sloppiest jo blowjobs of all time. I mean, he's gonna think of you like he's thinking of Gianna Michaels, right? And so, you want him to do that because he's like, oh my God, I want her, right? And when your guy's emotional and physically aroused, he's easy to manipulate it. He's easy to do whatever the fuck you want because now you know what he wants, right? And that's why, to mentally tease a guy, the best way to do it is to have a long distance relationships or even intentionally create the distance, right? By saying that you can't see him for a week or two and then intensely seeing him for a short time, like a couple days straight and then stopping it all. And during that moment of him being away from you, you tease him, you send him photos of how you look, just random photos, but then once in a while you send him a provocative photos or maybe of how your cleaves looks. And then, they, and, then, and, and then you just go back to being normal. You see, it's the space, the arousal, giving him what he wants, and the space that creates that mental arousal, all right? Um, Another one is, for example, like, a girl used to do this a lot, like, she used to say, like, oh, I'm about to go take a steamy shower, and tell me, I'll call you back later, and then I'm like, oh, fuck, how does that look like? <laughs> you know, I just imagine her, like, boom, you know what I'm saying, like that, right? So that's how you emotionally tease him. You emotionally, te you mentally tease him through creating that imagination, all right? But the only way for you to do this is to give him the pleasure, a little taste, and some space. All right, number three, number three, emotional. The tease is creating a slight bit of fear in his heart. Make him fear that you might withdraw. You see, once you withdraw once, he's gonna fear that you might withdraw again. All right, he's gonna, he, he, he cannot know that you'll never leave him because once you have that, the temptation is done. You see, people want what they, what they can, people want what they can't have. Once you know, once they know they have you, they don't want you as much and to the next person who gives them a temptation will come. So make him fear that you might withdraw. Make it subtle because fear that infiltrates every person's heart is a subtlest, like the fear of death. Every person has it, all right? So it's something that slowly, that he slowly, see, it's something that he slowly realizes that, you, that he may lose you. And that subtleness is what makes him like, oh shit. Come on, stay, stay, stay. For example, do you know when someone tells you they're about to leave and because they tell you they're about to leave in five minutes and you really want them to stay, it doesn't matter what happens simply because you know they may leave you, you listen more intently, right? Does that happen? That happens to me too, right? So you create that through having an air that you're not the only one, through having an air of if you fuck up, I might leave you, you see? So this is how it's done. As soon as you see him work for you, which is the same, when he reacts to your teasing, which is chasing you, like you tease him and he reacts, right? You gotta reward that, all right? As soon as you see that, reward it with more attention, with more affection, or even giving him some of what he wants, you see? For example, let's just say that you actually, the way you do this is to actually give him sex, right? What you wanna do then is, once he wants sex, that's how you have sex. After the second time, when he wants to have sex again, like in that same night, let's just say the same night, you stop there, okay? You see, you stop right there. You leave him on a high note, all right? That's the way to do it. Um, another one is, again, you, you emotionally tease him through withdrawing of what he wants, physically or emotionally, right? So by doing that, this is how you do it, right? And fear, again, fear is the same as emotion, you see? Fear is the same emotion as excitement. All right, so giving him a slight feeling that you might leave him while rewarding the living shit out of him with attention and affection when he chases after you, he was gonna become addicted to you, all right? So a way that you could do this is when you're talking to a guy or you're on a date with him, just tell him you only have like 30 minutes to hang out with him, okay? 30 or 15 minutes, it doesn't matter. 
But if you give them a time constraint, like I'm only going to be in the city for one week, I'm only going to be in here for a couple hours, the time constraint makes them value your attention more. You see? Another way is say that you're going and then, like, another way is like going to a dancing class, right? Again, it's the emotional teasing. The fear that you might, that he, you might leave you, that you might leave home. So if you're in a relationship and you want to tease them, right, go to dance class. Dance classes, people touch each other. You have to rotate partners and dance. He's going to see you doing that. He's going to see other guys touching you. He's going to see you being led by other guys and laughing. So he's going to feel that fear of losing you. See, another way is being hot and cold. One day, showing a lot of attention, texting him first. And the next day, being cold, pushing him away. All right? So it's all about giving his emotions what, they, what his emotions want and then stripping it away by doing the opposite. Okay? The fourth one, I'm actually going to show you five ways. The fourth one, verbal teasing. Ugh, this one's so fucked up. For example, like slight moans. Like let's say that you're talking to the guy, right? And you got to pick up something. <laughs> All you got to do is like, let's say you got to pick up, pick something up. you like, oh, oh, I got to get that. Like, uh, like you got to uh, get that. Or let's say I'm so uh, tired. And it's just like like that, right? A guy's getting like, oh, shit. Like, you know, like unintentional, like moans. Like, uh, and it's just like, go back and be normal, right? He's gonna be like, oh, whoa, 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 what the fuck? Every guy, re this was an accident. Every guy, whenever there's a moan, looks. It's kind of like when you're, when you're walking around. Let's say you hear a little bit of sound of porn. Porn has to be the loudest, quietest sound in the world. I swear to God. Like, give it, eh, eh. And like, everyone can hear that shit. And I'm like, I'll change the topic, right? Um, another one is like the maybe. Like, hey, babe, can, can, um, can I come over to see you tomorrow? Oh, well, sure, maybe. Maybe. The maybe, like, the uncertainty, remember? Uncertainty. You see, the, the, the most seductive language is the most vague language, the subtle language. Maybe we can hang out, not rather maybe we're going to hang out. Maybe we're going to have sex rather than we're going to have sex. Which one is more exciting? The maybe one, you see? It's the maybe one. Another one is talking about sex in general, like just talking about sex. Talking about what you like about sex and all that sort of stuff and then disqualifying him. Like saying, like saying, um. I don't know, like saying if he's tall and muscular, saying I love guys who are who are slim, right? Because it's just because they they, they they tend to really know what a woman wants, all right? And so this challenge, this says, oh, what the fuck? Like I'm not good enough for you, you know what I'm saying? And and, and on top of that, you're also talking about sex, all right? Um, another one is um, talk about what you love to do to guys. Talk about what you really like about sex. You see, and, you, and again, this may not be part of your character and depends on your religion but generally speaking talking about sex makes the guy think of you is he um if he touches you to tease a guy just say like guys do this often like if he touches you just be like oh, don't touch your merchandise like don't touch your merchandise this shit for free and just kidding around i'm just kidding you know like just kidding around like um another one is insinuating sex insinuating like words of sex for example um there was this one girl who told me that she had sex with one of her teachers right and she said that she knew that he, she started teasing the guy by, have, by talking about sex indirectly. For example, she gave him her, her report. It was a paper. And he was, she was like, can I email you the report? And he was like, no, I need the hard copy. And she was like, so I need to give you the hard copy? He's like, yes, you need to give me the hard copy. And like, they ended up, they ended up having sex. But like, you know, like, you know, like, then she, and then she went to his office and she was like, man, that, that paper was very hard. And like and and, and and those way of talking, it was very subtle, but they knew what they were talking about. The subtle, like we both talking about sex, but it just looks like we're talking about innocent stuff, is the hardest thing in the world. Because you're bottling up the tension. It's being it's being bottled up. And you're the one who's bottling up. Alright, so you're able to control that shit. Like, <laughs> you know, just kidding. Alright, so and the fourth one is situationally. Okay, so situationally is creating an intentional barrier. It doesn't have to be real. It's, it just has to be intentional. For example, you guys are you guys are home together, right? And you want to tease the guy, and let's say you let him get high and you let him kiss you, but then you tell your friend to come in. Tell your friend to come in, and they walk and they come in. And now there's a barrier. Now he was all aroused, and the situation doesn't allow him to. And now you just give him a look, like you really want to do it, but your friend is around. He'll tell you, tell your friend to leave. And you're like, I can't. And then you just give him the look. You just tell him, I want you now. But because of the situation, you can't. 
that, that's crazy. When nothing frustrates a guy more when he can have the girl, but he can't because of the situation. You see, it makes him resentful. And that's what you want. You see, that's what you want. Intentionally create barriers. Intentionally. If you're having sex and it's, the sex is getting boring, intentionally tell, um, tell him that, um, I don't know, like, intentionally tell that you have a roommate. And they're like, oh, my room is coming home, so we're going to have to have sex quietly, right? And because your roommate's there, it creates a barrier. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, you guys are having sex. But it's more now because you're trying not to get in trouble. You're trying not to get caught. And so what I want you to do is I want you to intentionally create those barriers. You see, tease the guy. You guys are in public, and you know that he can't do nothing. Then tease him there. Be playful with him. Touch his car quickly when no one's around and just keep walking. You see, do things, try not to get caught doing sexual things in public, okay? And tease him and tell him I know you want it, right? Intentionally create those circumstances. And that's going to make him want you more. And when he's away, he's going to be like, damn, that fucking girl is really messing with my head. And that's how it's done, all right? Um, this is pretty much it, y'all. Like, this is, this is something that you have, to, you have to treat teasing as a fun sport rather than a life or death situation, all right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys ever want to learn how to use your feminine energy to influence people, learn how to use your masculine energy to become more assertive, and also learn how to blend both energies to improve your dating life, your spiritual life, honestly, um, your relationship life, your family life, your career life, this is the course for you. If I had to make a course for my nieces, I have two nieces, one is 8, 19, and one is 14, 15. 16, holy shit. Oh my God, he's a bad fucking uncle. He's a, he's a bad uncle. Get him. Shut up, Melissa. You should, you should get this course, right? And this is the course that I will make for them. So for example, watch the curriculum, right? In the first week, we're going to be showing you how to establish a strong masculine foundation without letting it hurt your feminine energy. This masculine foundation is a source of who you are, right? It's it's your bodyguard. Without this, your whatever feminine energy you create, will be destroyed by the outside because your your fem your masculine is your shield. So we'll talk about goal setting. We'll talk about how to develop a serious attitude. We're going to be talking about how to um, how to use more logic, how to use more goal oriented behavior. It's more how to be a man, <laughs> you know, it, you know. Now the next one is how to embrace the feminine energy, right? This one would this one will teach you about how to minimize excessive masculine traits, developing self-awareness, healing abundant feminine energy, regulating your emotion, vo uh, mastering voice qualities and, ex and facial expressions, surrendering control and allowing pain to be felt. This is honestly, it's, it's, it, it, this will supercharge, like, like, like Kayo Ken, your masculine energy. After that, we have um, femininity in the workplace and how to be feminine in the workplace without letting people take advantage of you and the nuances of um, how women on power should behave versus women who are subordinates in the workplace. And even the dress code, they, they, these are, this is based on psychology, people. It's kind of insane. I'm actually excited about this one. The next week, we talk about navigating the labyrinth of male and female friendship. And this, a lot of women find confusing, so we talk about that. And how to identify envious friends, how to identify the good friends, how to keep male friends, and how to keep female friends. Week five, we talk about how to release the burden of the past and stop and destroy mental projections. This is actually really powerful. Um, and this, and then week six, we talk about how to increase your observational power so that you so that you can read people better. Um, and we have a bunch of bonuses. It, the course starts at um, nine at ninety nine dollars, um, and you guys can pre order the course today at sixty nine dollars before it goes out. Um, if you're watching this, most likely I'm in the meditation retreat, so I really most likely I will be praying for all of you guys. And um, just click on the description down below of the video, right there. You'll see it, and you can pre order that course. It's gonna be out by by the end of next month or the beginning of February of, of March. One of the two people, because I have a 10-day retreat to do. And I want to I want to finish the course um, after the retreat, because I think the, the ideas are going to be so much better. All right, man, I'll see you guys later. Free order, man. Oh, I'm closing the channel.